Hi, friends. Well, I just got done watching a pretty amazing State of the Union speech tonight by President Trump, so I wanted to give you some analysis on that and also point out the fact that America is a nation in contrast between the optimism, the victories, the moving forward with the Trump administration versus the obstructionism, the gloom, the doom, the pessimism, and the petty childishness of the Democrats was fully on display tonight. So let's get into it and talk about this. If you didn't get a chance to watch it, or if you did, maybe you'll agree or disagree with me, but that's okay. Uh, first of all, the good thing, the amazing thing that President Trump did is he didn't even mention impeachment once. Here he is sitting in the, the chamber of Congress that voted by Democrat-only votes to impeach him with the Speaker of the House sitting over his left shoulder, San Fran Nan, dressed in white again, loose dentures, fidgeting, playing with her papers, probably looking at her <laughs> retirement forms that she's got to fill out because I don't think she's going to be back after November. Um, and we'll get back to her nonsense in a little bit. And here he is, boldly, getting right in the face of the, the Democrat policies, repudiating the nonsense, the garbage that the Democrats have foisted on America, everything from the amount of people killed in sanctuary cities led by Democrats to other people denied opportunities by Democrats because they put their special interests above the needs of the American people. He was fearless, but he did it in a very professional way, certainly a higher level of professionalism than you see at his rallies, which isn't a bad thing because he knew where he was. He's talking to uh, the members of the Congress, both the senators, the members of the House, his cabinet was there, the Joint Chiefs were there, several of the Supreme Court justices were there, along with a bunch of special guests. So it was a very formal time. His speech reflected that. It was still very personal. It wasn't dry. Um, and he just talked about everything that he's been able to accomplish over the last three years, the amount of jobs created, the historic uh, low unemployment numbers, the millions of people who've been pulled off of welfare and food stamps. Uh, he emphasized the fact that those who have benefited the most from this growing economy because of his tax cuts and his regulatory reform have been in the blue-collar sector. In fact, he called it a blue-collar boom hitting America, that manufacturing is coming back and other non-professional, uh, shall we say, jobs have grown and the wages have grown and people are working. He talked about um, the uh, opportunity zones and he gave credit to Senator Scott uh, for that, for his work in, in developing those. And he even had a guest in the gallery who was a former homeless vet who had post-traumatic stress disorder who's worked his way back now. And because of these opportunity zones in, in areas where the economy wasn't good, he now is turning his life around. And that was an amazing thing. In fact, the guests tell it all, and I'll get to more of them in just a second, but it was an amazing array of guests that were there and their stories. Um, he talked about his trade deals. He talked about the new potential peace plan with Israel and the Palestinians. He talked about the amount of money spent in the military and how we've become the strongest military that has ever existed on the planet. Uh, and I could go on and on, and you've heard many of these things before, some of the same things he says at his rallies, but uh, or if you watched it tonight, you heard it. But the thing that I think made this one of the most powerful, memorable states of the Union in a long time is the guests that were there. Usually there's one or two heart-tugging guests that a president will include, but this was so much more powerful with what he had. He had he introduced this young 14-year-old boy who you know, wants to go into the Air Force and, and eventually join the Space Force, which he was touting. And he said, oh, by the way, sitting next to him is his 100-year-old great-grandfather, who was the last surviving Tuskegee Airman. Uh, the first uh, black fighter pilots in World War II who distinguished themselves as some of the best uh, pilots in, it wasn't the Air Force back then, it was the Army Air Corps, but, um, you know, here, here was living history. And in fact, with the approval of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, this man was just granted his rank of general. And President Trump put his stars on his shoulders in the Oval Office earlier in the day. I, I remarked to my wife when we were watching this, I said, he's a general, look, he's got a star on his shoulders. Um, and to hear that backstory then about how it just happened is pretty amazing. Um, 
he also talked about a, a woman who was in the gallery with two children whose husband was deployed in Afghanistan for his fourth tour and how much he appreciated her sacrifice and this, than the country does. And then he said, oh, by the way, I have a surprise for you. And suddenly down the steps next to where she was sitting, here was her husband. He came home to surprise her and they had a reunion right there in the house gallery during the State of the Union. I mean, come on now. His commitment to try to bring the troops back home and bring families back together wasn't displayed any more powerfully than that. So that was a pretty amazing thing to see too. He talked about the importance of school choice, how many kids in underperforming schools in these drug infested, gang infested schools are stuck there because of the bureaucrats and because of the iron grip the teachers unions have over schools. And he introduced a young African-American woman who's a single mother with her nine-year-old daughter sitting there from Philadelphia. And they wanted to get into um, a different school, but because our own governor... Tax you Tom Wolf, who was owned by the teachers union, vetoed legislation that would have expanded school choice in Pennsylvania. So she was out in the cold, stuck in a failing school and a miserable life ahead until tonight when the president announced that she has now become the recipient of a school choice scholarship. So this little nine-year-old girl will be able to go back home and her mother will be able to find her a good school to get into, and at least her life will be turned around. And he urged the Congress to pass similar legislation so that these nitwit governors like Tom Wolf and others will stop oppressing people that they don't think are important to them and allow the people to decide where they want to go to school, not government bureaucrats, not teachers' unions, and not these educational lobbies that are just Democrat money laundering machines. He also uh, introduced another young mother who was there with a two-year-old baby, a two-year-old baby now, but she was born prematurely at 21 weeks, and through the medical technology, I forget which hospital it was, this little girl who was well less than a pound when she was born survived, and she now thrived. And again, that was his lead-in to talk about the importance and the specialness of every human life. And he was slapping the abortionist right in the face with that to say, here's somebody you would have aborted if you'd gotten the chance. Here's a precious little girl who's alive because you didn't get your way to force everybody to pay for abortions. And that was powerful, too, and the Democrats absolutely hated it because they are so owned by Planned Parenthood. It's unbelievable. Oh, let's see who else was there. Oh, I can't forget the most, personally for me, the most important one of all. I'd seen a Fox News story about this earlier, so I knew it was coming, that sitting next to the First Lady was Rush Limbaugh. Uh, Rush just announced on his radio show, I believe it was yesterday, that he's been diagnosed with late-stage lung cancer. And so his future is very much in doubt at this point. I don't know the details. Obviously, he's going to have the best medical treatment possible, but usually stage four, and that's what Trump called it tonight, stage four cancer and lung cancer. And stage four, there isn't much survivability. So Rush is a fighter, but who knows? But he was sitting in the gallery at the State of the Union, probably the first time he was ever an invited guest there. I can't remember if he ever was before with any of the previous presidents. But And Trump also announced, Rush, because of all that you've done for this country and the amazing amount of charity you've done, we're going to award you the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor that any American citizen can get. And Russia's, the look on Russia's face, he was shocked. I don't think he knew about it. Fox News reported it an hour or so before the uh, State of the Union, but maybe Russia's wife and his family, other people, kept him away from the news, hearing it or seeing it. So it was a shock to him. And, in fact, Trump didn't even fool around. <laughs> he had the First Lady put it right around his neck while everybody watched in the country and the world. Uh, what an amazing honor for this incredible man. Um, Rush has been somebody that I've listened to on and off for oh, since the late 80s, since the very first Gulf War under George H.W. Bush. And he's somebody who's shaped my thinking about politics and our culture quite a bit. Um, in the uh, early 90s, I think it was about 93, I had a chance to even be in his studio audience when he had his TV show in New York City. Got to sit in the front row and watch him do his thing, had him autograph 
my my copy of his first book. Uh, it was an amazing experience. And also, I think it was late 90s, I actually did get through to talk to him on his radio show. He called in, called in, I think the topic was something about how we should approach the issue of abortion and the discussion, the, the conflict back then that was going on between James Dobson and Bill Bennett about how we should do that as pro-lifers. Uh, and we talked for a long time. He didn't cut me off real quick. I, he must have enjoyed the conversation. Of course, I started it off by saying, Rush Megadittos to the most insightful political commentator since de Tocqueville, <laughs> which is absolutely true. Uh, but uh, he, he laughed at that. So, yeah, so those are my two experiences personally with Rush Limbaugh. And I just... You know, my heart goes out to him for what he's now facing, but we hope and pray that he will hang in there as long as possible to do what he's doing. And when the Lord says to him, okay, well done, good and faithful servant, he'll bring him home and we'll see him again one day in heaven, Lord willing. So so that was bittersweet, but it was an amazing thing. I don't think that's ever been done at a State of the Union before. So now... <laughs> Aside from all this amazing positive stuff that Trump was going through and, and the Republicans were on their feet constantly cheering him, as soon as he was introduced by the Speaker, uh, by Speaker Pelosi, the beginning of his uh, speech, the chant, four more years, echoed through the whole, through the whole uh, gallery, well, not the gallery and floor, not the Democrat side, but the Republicans. You saw congressmen and senators chanting it. I mean, this was uh, very powerful stuff right from the beginning. On the other hand, the Democrats sat on their hands most of the night. The, you know, the group of female House members all dressed in white again to show their solidarity like they did last year, the silly nonsense. Some even have the, had little ERA Now buttons on because the state of Virginia is trying to resurrect the Equal Rights Amendment that's 38 years expired in passage, so it doesn't matter that the Virginia legislature just decided that they were going to pass it, it's dead, and it would have to start all over again. Uh, but that's irrelevant to what happened. And Pelosi, well, she was an absolute... An absolute idiot up there. She tried the best she could not to pay any attention to him, to look at him, to ignore everything he said. She kept shuffling papers around like she was pretending to read. Started to have some denture problems when he started talking about sanctuary cities like um, New York City, but especially the whole state of California being a sanctuary city, and where he talked about um, you know people who had been killed there by illegal immigrants, uh, illegal aliens, um, so she was not happy, and the truth of the matter is by the time we got to the end of the speech, she just couldn't handle it anymore. When he uh, closed the speech, she stood up and tore her copy of his speech in half in front of everybody, show everybody how big and tough and powerful she is. What a childish tantrum from San Fran Nan. No class, no professionalism, no decorum. Just petty, childish, selfish, arrogant nonsense. Oh, I should also mention too. He did mention he did talk about uh, how we've gotten rid of terrorists, and he mentioned the fact that um, he had two families there. Uh, Kayla Mueller's uh, parents were there. They're the parents of the girl that was kidnapped by ISIS and was raped and tortured and eventually murdered by al-Baghdadi. And he pointed out the fact that um, the special ops team that took out baghdadi called their mission in honor of her, of her life. And the father even had a picture over there, and it was a very sad and touching time. He also showed another uh, woman and a little, a little thirteen-year-old boy. Actually, it wasn't that little; he was getting bigger. But her husband and his father were killed by a roadside bomb in Afghanistan when this when this boy was just an infant. And he tied that to the um, targeting of Soleimani or Soleimani, whatever the heck that Iranian guy was that got himself blown up um, by our, our drone strike. So he was putting a face on the fact of these are the lives that have been affected by these terrorists. This is why we want to kill them. This is why we want to stop them from harming people. And that was all part of um, 
the speech as well. And again, the Democrats didn't like that. They were sitting on their hands. They can't even cheer for America's heroes, it seems like. The only thing I saw all the Democrats get up and cheer about, really, was when he mentioned prison reform early on in his speech, because they, if they you know, showed that they were against prison reform, well, there goes a lot of their votes. So... At any rate, those are my first impressions on the State of the Union. We'll see how it uh, plays out over the next few days. Tomorrow, 4 o'clock, Trump gets acquitted, and Pelosi you know, goes back in her hole again and wait for spring to come, I guess. I don't know. But this State of the Union definitely showed the battle between light and darkness in this country. And we saw that on display as, as Trump was touting all the good things that are happening in America, all the freedoms that are and opportunities that are growing, and the Democrats have nothing. All they want to do is trash and destroy this nation. And he stomped on that nonsense, too, by saying America will never be a socialist country and we will never have socialism control our health care system. So, at any rate, um, if you have any comments from the State of the Union, please feel free to put them down below. And uh, we'll see what happens next in this ongoing circus that's Washington as we proceed towards the next election in November. Please like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell, and we will back and be back in touch with you with another update soon. Thank you so much for listening.